Before we get into native apps, I actually wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about how what everything you've learned in the last three weeks for making web apps for the iPhone will also work for the very cool iPad. And we've been talking a little bit about the iPad this morning in our pre-class session. Uh, so for those of you who are under a rock and didn't actually uh, hear about the iPad, I'm <laughs> well, or here it deep, is. dark cave. <laughs> yes, some dark cave. Um, so this is what the iPad looks like. It's kind of like a big eye touch. And um, the other thing that Apple announced that I'm really excited about is iBooks. Uh, so they're going to be competing with the Amazon Kindle. They're going to have a bookstore where you can buy books and read them on your iPad, which is pretty cool. So what, how does what you've learned already apply to the iPad? Well, we talked in week one about the basics of styling and sizing your web pages for the iPhone. And everything that you learned that week will also work for the iPad. So the, the, the way that you size your pages, you're going to size them a little bit bigger. But same idea, same with styling. You're going to have maybe slightly different human interface guidelines for the iPad because it's a little bit bigger. Um, there, there's a beta version of the interface guidelines for the iPad already available for those of those people who have paid for the developer program. Conditional CSS, WebKit extensions, iPad style lists, using the iPad simulator, it's all going to be very similar to what you've learned um, in week one for the iPhone. And all of the HTML and CSS will be basically the same because mobile Safari is going to be basically the same, just a bigger version of it. So um, again, everything that you learned will apply. What about week two when we tapped into features of the iPhone? Um, all of these except for making a call will also apply to the iPad. So the I iPad version one will not have a phone, but you will be able to if send email, you'll be able to launch Google Maps, play video, um, the same concepts about ma making a web app that launches from the home screen will work. So things like mobile Safari, which we just mentioned, uh, Google Maps, movies, the video player, um, and YouTube will all work on the iPad. What about JavaScript and libraries? Um, in week three, last week, we talked about um, how to detect touches and implement gestures, and we implemented a swipe gesture using JavaScript, and then we implemented an animation using CSS. All of those things will work for your iPad as well. And I would guess that IUI and JQ Touch, a lot of the things that work out of the box will work on the iPad, and then they'll probably make some updates to those libraries as well so that, that we'll have iPad-specific features. So as you can see, everything that you've learned up to now well, um, applies really well to the iPad. Now this week we're going to be talking about native apps and everything you need to build a native app will also apply to the iPad. The SDK, um, there's a beta version out, it's under NDA so we can't talk about it today, but um, the SDK will be for both the iPhone and the iPad, so you'll, you'll download a new version of the SDK, the one after the one we're talking about today. And you'll develop your app in, in using the methods we're talking about today, and you'll be able to distribute your app on either the iPhone or the iPad or both. And uh, Apple claims that almost all apps in the store will work on the iPad, and that's, I don't know, 140,000 apps or something now. So I don't know if they actually tested all 140,000 on the iPad, but um, that's pretty cool that uh, you'll be able to just use your iPad. The, the, apps that you've already bought on the iPad right away.